Hi, it's Tom Gregory here and welcome to this video all about the Gradle Wrapper. And in this video we're going to be answering the question of what is the Gradle Wrapper? Why would you want to use it in the first place? And how can we apply it to a project? And we're going to be running through some real life examples. So let's get right into it. The Gradle Wrapper is a script that can be added to your Gradle project and used to execute your build. And it has the advantage that it means that you don't have to have Gradle installed on your machine when you run your build. And the Gradle wrapper guarantees that you'll be using the version of Gradle required by your project. And it also means that you can easily update your project to a newer version of Gradle and push those changes to version control to ensure that all your other team members are using the newer version. So now that you've got a flavour of what the Gradle Wrapper is all about, let's run through some common use cases. So to set up a new project to use the Gradle Wrapper, first off you're going to need to have Gradle installed in the first place, which you can do by going to gradle.org slash install. And once you've installed it, don't forget to add the Gradle bin directory to your path so that you can then run Gradle from the command line. So now that we've got Gradle installed, what we can do is make an empty directory here, say wrapper test, go into that directory, and then we can run a command Gradle wrapper. And what this is going to do is to install the Gradle wrapper script into this directory. And now that this is completed, I can run the tree command, which I have installed, to see what files we have. And you can see here that we started with an empty directory and now we've got one, two, three, four different files. The first one is the Gradle wrapper jar file, which will be used for downloading the correct version of Gradle when we run the build. The second file is the Gradle wrapper.properties file, which has various properties that you can see here including the Gradle version. And because I've got version 6.1.1 of Gradle installed, the Gradle wrapper has automatically assumed that version. And we've also got a Gradle W and Gradle W.bat script. Gradle W is essentially what you're going to be using to run your build. It's a script made for the Linux operating system. Gradle W.bat, on the other hand, is for Windows. And all these files and directories should be committed into version control so that anybody that checks out your project can then use Gradle W or Gradle W.bat and ensure that they're using the correct version of Gradle. So now that we've got the wrapper installed, let's try running it. So we can run Gradle W on a Linux based operating system. And then we can see here, welcome to Gradle 611. On a Windows based operating system, if I cd to the directory, we can likewise run gradlew.bat and we get the same output. And for the rest of this video, we're going to be using the Linux gradlew shell script for several examples that we're going to run through, but obviously, you can use whatever is appropriate for whatever operating system you're using. And of course, to do anything useful with Gradle, we need to pass a task. So here is a couple of examples. First off, say we wanted to initialize our project with a build.gradle and settings.gradle file, we could run Gradle W in it. And we can select basic project, groovy, default name. And now we've got a project with the build.gradle and settings.gradle file. Likewise, if we wanted to run a build, we could use the Gradle wrapper script to do Gradle W build. And then we've built the project. And this is always using the fixed version of Gradle, which in this case is 6.1.1. And if you want to check at any point what version of the Gradle wrapper you're using, you just need to run Gradle W dash dash version. And this tells us here that we're using version 6.1.1 of Gradle. But if we were to head over to the Gradle releases page here, gradle.org slash releases, we can see that we're actually a bit out of date. The latest version is 6.2.2. And we always want to be on the latest tech, right? If we wanted to update to a newer version of Gradle, all we need to do here is run dot slash gradle w wrapper 
and then dash dash Gradle version and pass whatever version we want. So in this case we're going to update to the latest version of Gradle which at this time is 6.2.2. And now if we run dot slash Gradle W dash dash version we can see that we're now on version 6.2.2. And if you're observant, you may have noticed that in the background Gradle has gone off and downloaded version 6.2.2 from the internet. Which brings us on to... So as I've already discussed, the Gradle wrapper makes sure that we're always using the version of Gradle that's been specified whenever we run a build. But if the wrapper were to download the version of Gradle every time we run a build, this could get really slow and really annoying very quickly. Consequently, Gradle wrapper actually caches the version of Gradle and we can see this in our home directory. So if we look into our home directory in the .gradle and then wrapper and then dists, we can see several versions of Gradle here and here we've got the latest 6.2.2 and here is the previous one 6.1.1. So this is where the wrapper caches the Gradle library. And I just want to reiterate how important it is that when you're using the Gradle wrapper, you always run the Gradle wrapper script, i.e. the Gradle W script that's in your project directory, as opposed to running Gradle that's installed on your machine. And the importance of this is obvious if I was to do here Gradle W dash dash version. Here in my project, I've got version 6.2.2 installed, whereas if I was to run Gradle dash dash version, I've got 6.1.1. So the whole point of the wrapper is that the project can enforce the version. So whenever I want to run a build, I should always run Gradle W build, and that's going to use version 6.2.2 as specified by the project. So hopefully now you've got a better idea of what is the Gradle wrapper and how you can use it on your project to enforce consistency of the Gradle version. And by the way, if you're using IntelliJ IDEA, check out my other video about how to set up a project really easily from your IDE. And I'm also going to put a link down below for some more documentation. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Tom Gregory Tech.